Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now as a longtime Star Wars fan, I've often wondered what happens to lightsabers when they get lost. Now I'd assume they'd end up salvaged by Jawas or in a private collection somewhere. So when Nsaber sent me their Episode 3 Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber, I wondered how someone who came into possession of this kind of relic might display it. And that's where we'll start this build. My plan was to build some kind of clear canister with interior supports to make the lightsaber look like it was floating. And with that in mind, I started looking for a base object to start my build from. And that's when I found this solar powered lamp. It already had sort of a Star Wars look to it. And I thought that might help to inform some additional creative decisions for this project. But first I needed to disassemble it and get it down to its core parts. Once I had the lantern disassembled and could see its interior structure, I realized I would need to remove these four pegs to allow me the space to add a bit of lighting. So I grabbed my rotary tool with a cutoff bit and got to removing them. And speaking of lighting for this project, I'm going to be trying something I've never used before, this NeoPixel ring, and it'll be controlled by an Arduino Nano microcontroller. Now I'm not a programmer, but thankfully I was able to find an online tool to help with creating a basic animation. I started by adding an LED strip, adjusted the quantity of LEDs to match the number on my NeoPixel ring, along with which pin on my Arduino Nano would be responsible for data. Then I added the rainbow effect from their effects option panel and edited the colors to create a simple lighting effect for the inside of my display. When I was happy with how it looked, I clicked the generate button to output the code. Then I could jump into the Arduino app, paste the code into a new sketch, and connect the controller via USB to upload the code onto my Arduino Nano. Now when the Nano receives power, it will start looping the animation until I turn it off. But before I can do that, I'll need to remove the connector, strip the wires, and solder the NeoPixel ring to my Arduino board. The ring indicates what each of the three wires are connected to, ground, data, and power. And with that information, I could solder the ground wire to the ground pin on the Arduino, the data wire to the D6 pin that I selected in the code, and lastly the 5 volt wire to the 5 volt pin. Then I can connect my power supply and test my work. With the lighting out of the way, I wanted to flesh out the overall design a bit more. So I modeled and 3D printed a few greeblies that fit over the lantern's mounting posts and glued them to the base and cap with a bit of CA glue. I also added a 3D printed outer ring and a laser cut small inner ring to bulk up the outer profile and fill the interior gap to keep things looking tidy once the acrylic tube is in place. With the base and cap taking shape, it was time to paint all of my parts. Off camera, I applied a layer of primer, and once it was dry, I was able to lay down my top color. I went with this super dark gray, since I thought black might be a little too pedestrian. And while it doesn't look much different than the primer, I think it was the right choice for this project. While I wait for the parts to dry, I can shift my attention to the interior portion of this lightsaber canister. I thought it would be more interesting to have the lightsaber suspended inside of an acrylic tube, and to make it look like it's floating, I laser cut these interlocking parts that match the shape of the top and bottom of the lightsaber, and will hold it in position in the center of the tube. Rather than use CA glue, which can be a bit messy, I used a bit of acrylic solvent and a 1-2-3 block to help keep them at a perfect 90 degree angle while I bonded the parts. This solvent sets up fast, so after 30 seconds, they were ready to go and I could get into some of the final touches. Because the light source will be below the saber, 
I thought it was important to add a reflective surface inside of the top cap to help bounce the light back downward. So off camera, I added a small disc covered in aluminum tape and glued it in place. The next thing I needed to deal with were all of the lamp switch holes along the edge of the caps. I had originally intended to use some acrylic to cover them up, but found that the bend was a bit too severe and needed to pivot to a different approach. So I hopped back into Fusion 360 and 3D modeled and printed the small covers, which will then get an acrylic applique glued to them. This will both cover up the openings as well as adds a bit more character to the caps. With everything glued in place, it was time to permanently mount the Arduino and NeoPixel ring, and for that I'll be using a bit of hot glue, since it's non-conductive. And once the hot glue around the Arduino had cooled, I added a bit more glue to the four posts I removed earlier as a mounting point for the NeoPixel ring. And once in place, I could add in a bit of diffusion in the form of a slightly translucent piece of white acrylic. This will help to hide the individual pixels and should give it a nice even glow. I also added in the small inner ring now that the diffusion was in place. The last thing I wanted to do before final assembly was to add in a few decals as well as a couple of greeblies at the top to make it a bit more industrial looking. And the only thing left to do now is put it together and see how it looks. Now calling this prop finished without any level of weathering goes against all of my natural inclinations. But given the story I've created for it, I think this display is exactly how it should look. I'd like to thank NSabers for sending me their episode three Obi-Wan Kenobi Saber. And if you'd like to learn more about it, I'll leave a link down in the video description. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>